Welcome to St. Stephen's Service of Evensong on the fourth Sunday after Trinity. Whether you are a regular member of St. Stephen's congregation or a member of our wider congregation with us on the internet, you are very welcome to join us for worship. Please share our service with anyone else you feel would enjoy worshipping with us. Today's service has been recorded in our own homes and includes some archive recordings of our choir singing in Chelmsford and Salisbury cathedrals. The hymn, appointed psalm and anthem have been recorded for this service by members of our choir this week in their homes. The order of service is available on our website, stephenscanterbury.net, so that you can follow and join in, or you may wish to pray in silence our words as we say and sing them. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the first verse of the second chapter of the second book of Samuel. After this, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? The Lord said to him, Go up. David said, To which shall I go up? He said, To Hebron. So David went up there along with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David brought up the men who were with him, every one with his household, and they settled in the towns of Hebron. Then the people of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. When they told David, it was the people of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul, David sent messengers to the people of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, May you be blessed by the Lord because you showed this loyalty to Saul your Lord, and buried him. Now may the Lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you, and I too will reward you, because you have done this thing. Therefore let your hands be strong and be valiant, for Saul your Lord is dead, and the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner, son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbal, son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. He made him king over Gilead, the Asherites, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbal, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned for two years. But the house of Judah followed David. This time, that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah uh, was seven years and six months. There was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. David grew stronger and stronger while the house of Saul became weaker and weaker. Here ends the lesson. <laughs>
The second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St Luke, chapter 18, beginning at verse 31. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished, for he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and he will be mocked and insulted and spat upon. After they have flogged him, they will kill him, and on the third day he will rise again. But they understood nothing about all these things. In fact, what he said was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd was going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, praised God. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded any one of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Here ends the lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, 
may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. We pray for our government and people that wise decisions may be made which prevent a new rise in COVID-19 cases, which mitigate the financial suffering caused by the epidemic, and which learn from the lessons of lockdown to help us move towards a fairer and holier society. Most gracious God, we humbly beseech thee, as for this kingdom in general, so especially for the High Court of Parliament, under our most religious and gracious Queen at this time assembled, that thou wouldst be pleased to direct and prosper all their consultations to the advancement of thy glory, the good of thy Church, the safety, honour and welfare of our sovereign and her dominions, that all things may be so ordered and settled by their endeavours upon the best and surest foundations that peace and happiness, truth and justice, religion and piety may be established among us for all generations. These and all of the necess necessaries for them, for us and for thy whole church we humbly beg in the name and mediation of Jesus Christ, our most blessed Lord and Saviour. Amen. On this weekend, when the United States of America celebrates its Independence Day, we pray for the people of that country, for those areas where the coronavirus epidemic is worsening, 
for a lessening of the racial tensions in that country and for an end to the racial hatred and injustices which fuel that tension. A prayer for the people and president from the Liturgy of the Episcopal Church in the USA. O Lord our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may, well may we, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the State Governors, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. This week, too, our cathedral commemorates the 800th anniversary of the transfer of the body of St Thomas Becket to his new shrine in the Trinity Chapel. And in our hymn and anthem, we recall the blessings of pilgrimage. We give thanks for the gift of pilgrimage and we pray for all pilgrims. We pray too for all those who support and welcome pilgrims, for those who, because of the pandemic, are frustrated in their desire to go on pilgrimage, and for us all, that we may nevertheless go forward and prosper in our spiritual life, which Bunryan reminds us is the most important pilgrimage. An ancient prayer for those on pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela. O God, who brought your servant Abraham out of the land of the Chaldeans, protecting him in his wanderings, who guided the Hebrew people across the desert, we ask that you watch over us, your servants, as we walk in the love of your name. Be our companion on the walk, our guide at the crossroads, our breath in our weariness, our protection in danger, our hostel on the Camino, our shade in the heat, our light in the darkness, our consolation in our discouragements, and our strength in our intentions so that with your guidance we may arrive safe and sound at the end of the road and enriched with grace and virtue return safely to our homes filled with joy in the name of jesus christ our lord amen now in a few moments of silence we remember all those known to us who need our prayers this night, particularly the sick, the dying, the bereaved, the sad and the sorrowful. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. We say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. As we conclude our service of evening prayer, we commend ourselves and all people into the hands of Almighty God. 
Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.